Despite winning an NBA championship just two years ago, the Milwaukee Bucks have fired head coach Mike Budenholzer. And for a man who has had that championship success and comes from the Greg Popovich coaching tree, could he be the best candidate to replace Nick Nurse as head coach for the Toronto Raptors? Let's get into it. This is Amateur Hour Sports, the YouTube channel dedicated to Toronto Raptors content in videos, live streams, and shorts. If you like what you see from today's video, make sure to hit that subscribe button, help me on my road to 15,000 subscribers, and drop a like along the way. The Toronto Raptors are in the middle of their head coaching search, and there's been reports about the number of candidates around the basketballing world that they've gained permission to speak to, just to kind of feel them out in the early stages of their interviewing process. And the reason we can be in the early stages of this interviewing process is we have the whole of the NBA playoffs here still to go. And along the way for the NBA playoffs, other coaching candidates could be made available as they maybe underperform with their current team, but could maybe do a better job with the Toronto Raptors. And the first big name to fall from the playoff teams is Mike Budenholzer of the Milwaukee Bucks, who is seeking new employment after getting fired. As a result of the Milwaukee Bucks, the one seed losing in five games, only five games to the Miami Heat in the first round of the the playoffs. Mike Budenholzer won a championship with that Milwaukee Bucks team just two years ago in 2021. And some people around the league, including Damian Lillard, feel as though it was a little bit of a short leash for Mike Budenholzer, despite the loss in the first round here. And there were maybe some extra things going on behind the scenes that would have affected Mike. But many also feel as though this was the right time for the Milwaukee Bucks to move on. Now, somebody who has had that championship of success, somebody who has had other success with teams like the Atlanta Hawks, somebody who worked very closely for the better part of two decades under Greg Popovich at the San Antonio Spurs. This could be a great basketballing mind potentially to bring into the Toronto Raptors as the replacement for Nick Nurse. So in the video today, we're going to be discussing his candidacy for this position. Mike Budenholzer was hired by the Milwaukee Bucks to start of the 2018-2019 season, the same time that the Raptors hired Nick Nurse and went on to win the NBA championship, dispatching of the one-seed Milwaukee Bucks along the way in the conference finals. And perhaps if the Raptors don't take care of business in that conference finals, maybe the Milwaukee Bucks go all the way and win the championship that season. Maybe our outlook on this team is completely different, but as a result of the whole situation, the Raptors were champions. Two years later, the Bucks got over that hump and won their own NBA championship. In the previous season, they fell very marginally to the Boston Celtics in the conference semifinals, maybe as a result of that Chris Middleton injury. If Middleton's healthy, I think the Bucks win that series. And the most recent rendition of the playoffs, yeah, there was the injury to Giannis. Yes, he did miss one game, but ultimately... It felt as though the Bucks were still good enough to win that series. They were the one seed after all. So where did it really go wrong for the Bucks? Obviously, there was that injury in the process. And we found out after the series that Mike Budenholz was dealing with a family tragedy along the way that could have affected his coaching for that series. I don't want to use that too much into my criticism and my evaluation here of Mike Budenholzer for that series. Surely it weighed on him a little bit, but there's been specific coaching tendencies over the course of his head coaching career that would lead me to say that Mike Budenholzer is not the man for the Raptors. The most important part of coaching in a playoff basketball setting is the adjustments that you make along the way. The coach that can make the right adjustments, the correct adjustments, the correct times, those are the coaches that are going to have successful teams in the biggest moments of the biggest games in the NBA season as it comes to the NBA playoffs. It's all about making those adjustments, countering the adjustments that come from other teams. But in the case of Mike Budenholzer, he has consistently shown a lack of ability to change, to adjust. And one would say, myself would say, that it comes from a very high degree of stubbornness from Budenholzer, saying that his way is the best way. This is the way we're going to win. We're either going to win doing it this way or we're going to lose doing it this way, but we are not going to change our ways because we believe in the ways that we play. Specifically, we saw in that Miami Heat series an unwillingness to change. They lost in five games. They were massive favorites that series. They lost in five games. I know there was a slight injury to Giannis along the way, but the biggest factor in that series was Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler was the best player in that series, and the Bucks showed an incapability of slowing him down in any way whatsoever. It became very evident very quickly in that series that Butler was in playoff mode and was absolutely taking over. 
But at no point did doubles get thrown his way. At no point did they switch Giannis to defending him instead of Drew Holiday. Like, Drew Holiday's an excellent defender, but when that wasn't working, 100%, Giannis should have been guarding him one-on-one. 100%, they should have gone a little bit away from the drop coverage defense that admittedly, has been incredibly successful with him. I mean, having Brooke Lopez in drop coverage, the runner-up for the Defensive Player of the Year in the NBA, that's great to have, but it was constantly getting torched. So going into the series, it made sense. You know, you had Drew Holiday as the defender for Jimmy Butler. If he got past that, you had the drop coverage of Brooke Lopez, and you had the help defense of Giannis. All of that made sense, but as it started to unfold, as it started to turn out not to be working, there should have been adjustments being made by Mike Budenholzer to rectify the situation, but those adjustments never came, and as a result, the Milwaukee Bucks faltered in that series. But it's not just that one series that we have here from Mike Budenholzer as a head coach that really showcases his stubbornness and unwillingness to adjust. We can go all the way back to 2015. This is one of my favorite examples for Mike Budenholzer. Yes, this is a long time ago, but it's an example again of his unwillingness to change and unwillingness to adjust. His Atlanta Hawks team had that wonderful 60-win season in 2015, and they were the one seed. They were playing the Cleveland Cavaliers in the conference finals, and despite being the home seed, they got swept. Now, as a Raptors fan, I know very well LeBron James can just do that to you. LeBron James, that Cleveland Cavaliers team, yeah, they could just absolutely run you over, Toronto fans. Oh boy, unfortunately, we do know best about that. But the manner in which they lost those four games were very telling to Mike Budenholzer as an NBA head coach. In that series, they were essentially daring the Cleveland Cavaliers to shoot three-pointers. They were giving up the three ball to the Cleveland Cavaliers. Mike Budenholzer saw that as a way of winning. As it turned out, the Cleveland Cavaliers were shooting lights out from three in that series. They were taking a ton of three-pointers in that series, and they were knocking down 40% of those three-pointers. The Cavaliers were content in taking those shots. They made them at an outrageous clip of just under 40% across the four games in that series. And at no point did Mike Budenholzer take that away. So there's been problems with Bud as a coach, and it seemed like this was the perfect time to let him go. I, I hate to discredit a championship, and I hate to put it this way, but the championship in 2021 it really did save his job because these sort of tendencies as a head coach were coming out about Mike Budenholzer a little bit more as we saw in the first few years with the Milwaukee Bucks. But that championship, look, I understand how impressive it is to win a championship. I'm not trying to discredit that, but that team still hadn't hit their ceiling when they won that championship. And Mike Budenholzer wasn't the right man for the job to get this extraordinarily talented team to their ceiling. They didn't have to hit their ceiling to be good enough to win that 2021 championship, but now it feels as though this is a team that has hit its ceiling on what they can do as Budenholzer as a coach, and they need a new coach to come in and unlock different things for that team. As for the Raptors and what we're doing this season, what we're doing for this upcoming season, development is going to be the biggest thing for this team. Budenholzer seems to be a coach who is intent on winning, especially in the regular season, like just churning out wins for this Milwaukee team in the regular season settings. But as far as what the Raptors are doing, you know, I respect Mike Budenholzer as a coach to a certain degree, but I think there's a certain limitation on what he can achieve with your team. So I think it's a good fill in right now. For Nick Nurse, but as far as like the long-term winning aspirations that Shirley Masai Jiri has, I mean, the amount of times he quotes winning in his press conferences, I just don't think this is the right person for the Raptors to take on as a head coach. As time goes on, I become more and more of a fan of what Jerry Stackhouse could bring to this team as a head coach. Like I, I am firmly in love with that candidate being the Raptors head coach going forward. And I'm a big fan of what Patrick Matumbo could do for this team. Very development oriented coach, but in the case of Jerry Stackhouse in particular, a very offensive driven coach who I think could get a lot out of this current group of players that the Toronto Raptors have. I just don't think Mike Budenholzer is the right person to get the most out of this team. And I don't know if he's the right guy for a lot of teams in the NBA because adjustments are so essential to what NBA teams need to do at the highest level of competition. Though the Raptors are not going to be there this season, that is obviously a future aspiration for this team. The coach that comes in, you want to have them be here for the long haul. But there's no rush in finding our next candidate here. We still have more of the playoffs to go. There's question marks if if the Nuggets fall in the second round to the Phoenix Suns. I know at the time of recording, they're up to nothing, but... Maybe if the Nuggets fall in this series, does Mike Malone become available as a coach? That would be a great candidate for the Raptors. 
Do the Clippers part ways with Ty Lu? Maybe for the same reasons that Mike Budenholzer is gone. A decent coach, but has the team hit their ceiling there? Ty Lu is one of the best at making those in-game adjustments. I would love to have Ty Lu as the next Raptors head coach. And many other candidates, perhaps, around the NBA landscape who could be looking for new jobs right now. The Raptors are going to do their homework. The Raptors are going to do their due diligence in finding the best head coaching candidate to replace Nick Nurse in Toronto. To me... Very, very clearly, Mike Budenholzer is not that guy. On the flip side, Nick Nurse, hey, Milwaukee need a head coach. I think they should be 100% looking at Nick Nurse very intently on being the next guy there. But as far as we are, I think we got a pass on Mike Budenholzer. I know we got a pass on Mike Budenholzer. He's not the man for the job. We'll find another great coaching candidate out there. What do you make of Mike Budenholzer's coaching candidacy for the Toronto Raptors? Do you think he's a good fit? Do you think he's a bad fit? Let me know if you agree with me in the comments down below. That is it for me for today. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy, please hit that like button. Subscribe to Amateur Hour Sports. More Raptors content just like this. Getting in the full swing of things since I moved just on Monday. We'll see you again next time for another video.